Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we discovered that if the incidence of the disease within the population or the sample that you're testing drops, we had dropped from an incidence of 4% down to 1%, the probability that a subject or an individual that would be tested positive would actually have the disease dropped from 44.95% when 40 out of 1,000 have the disease to just 16.53% when only 10 out of 1,000 had the disease. So the question then would come up, well, what if it was even more rare and only 1 in 1,000, 0.1% of the population have the disease that you're testing for and the parameters to test were the same? 98% sensitive, 95% specific. Remember, 98% sensitive means that out of 100 people being tested that have the disease, 98% would test positive. And for 100 people that did not have the disease that were healthy, when 95% specificity is indicated, that means that 95% would correctly be flagged as being healthy. If they indeed were healthy, there would then be five false positives. All right, so in those particular circumstances, what would happen if only one in a thousand had the disease? What would change in their calculation? Well, here, 98% is still the probability that if someone has the disease, they would be tested positive. That's the sensitivity, that doesn't change. And the 90, the 90, let's see here, where am I? Oh, and the 5% here, that wouldn't change because that's the probability that someone would test positive if they were healthy, and that would be the false positive. It would be 100 minus 95%, which is 5%. So the 98, 98, and 5%, that would not change. What would change is the probability that the person tested would have the disease. Well, that would now change from 1% to just 0.1%. And over here, instead of 1%, that would be 0.1%. And likewise, what would be the probability that the person tested would be healthy? Well, instead of 99%, that would now become 99.9%. So this would change to 99.9%. And again, I would think that there would be a drop in the probability, but would it be a big drop. Well, let's see here. Base theorem is kind of an interesting, interesting thing and not always things happen the way you would expect them to happen. So let's see what would happen in this case. So we end up with 0.98 times 0.001, because we're converting to decimals. And then we divide that by the quantity, 0.98 times 0.001 plus 0.05 times 0.999 equals and now, wow, we're down to 1.92%. Just, let's see, equals to 1.92%. Wow, that's an enormous drop. So now, if there's only an occurrence of 1 in 1,000 that have this particular condition that you're testing for, and the test has some pretty good ratings, 98% sensitive, 95% specific, not the best, but not bad, then you'd say, if someone tests positive, you're only 1.9% sure, or that's 1.92% probability is probably a better way of saying it, that the person actually has the condition you're testing for. But I want to test, check this one more time just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Denominator equals, sure enough, 1.92. Did not make a mistake. I make lots of mistakes sometimes, especially in this kind of thing. But in this case, correct. So now we are at a probability, and let me use a different color. So the probability that the person has the disease when they test positive has now dropped to 1.92%. That's a very low probability. What does that mean or what does it imply? What well, that implies when you're testing for conditions which are very rare, you need to have testing parameters that are much better than this, especially the specificity. With only 95% specificity, what that means is that there's a very large percentage, 5%, that you can get false positives. And if even though there's many healthy subjects, that means you're going to get a lot of readings that are positive even though they're healthy. And so the number of people that have false positives that are healthy far outnumber the people that have the disease that show a positive. And therefore, the probability that the one that has a positive result is actually does actually have the condition is of course much, much lower because there's so many that are false positives, and that's what shows up in here. So the lesson learned here is, first of all, 
when the people that have the condition or the subjects that have the condition you're looking for are very rare, the probability that when you do get a positive result, that that is indeed the case, that that person has that condition, is very low. Unless you can somehow get rid of the false positives. If your test is so good that it almost never ever flags a false positive, then you will still get good results out of the test. Hmm. I think we should do another example to show that that's indeed the case. So let's do one more and now what we're going to do is we're going to up the specificity of the test to see if that indeed does raise the probability that if a person or a subject is tested positive, they do indeed have the condition you're testing for. So let's do one more example and change that parameter to see what would happen.